Businessman, politician, philanthropist, Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire innovator who ran New York City for 12 years, is a man who has taken many distinct and seemingly contradictory roles over the year, pretty much succeeding at all of them. Yet while Bloomberg is one of the most influential public figures in America, he is also one of the most private. Now, a new biography seeks to pull back the curtain on the man who continues to divide opinion in his adoptive city and around the country. The Many Lives of Michael Bloomberg traces Bloomberg's path from his modest Jewish working class upbringing in Medford, Massachusetts, to his surprising admission into the Ivy League, to his formative years in Wall Street, where he developed the technology that revolutionized the world of trading, making him one of the richest men in the world. The book also takes readers inside City Hall during the Bloomberg years, giving insight into the policies and decisions that shape New York City to this day and will likely continue to shape the city for years to come. And joining us now is the author of The Many Lives of Michael Bloomberg, Eleanor Randolph. Eleanor, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. So Eleanor, as the book's title indicates, you cover a lot of the different lives that Michael Bloomberg lived. So let's start with the first one. Okay. His childhood in the modest town of Medford, Massachusetts. Um, was there any hint, any indication in that childhood that he would become the amazingly successful person that he did? You know, it's easy to look back and see those things. Uh, now, one of the things his mother said, his mother died when she was 102, but before she died, she said he liked to run everything. <laughs> and that sounds familiar going through all 77 years, you know. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he told people, you know, I never want to be on a board. I always want to be the head of the board. <laughs> Talk about the ex his experience in Wall Street, how much that uh, shaped him. You know, I think, uh, I think, you know, when we get to talking about the, him as mayor, I think one of the reasons he was so stiff, you know, when he gave speeches was that he was trying not to use the sort of argo of Wall Street because it was a rough place. I mean, I don't, I can't say what they actually said uh, when they said hello at Solomon Brothers, but the last word was you. And <laughs> so, you know, it was just tough, you know, hey Harvard, get me coffee. Yeah. It was just, if you, if you uh, wanted to be rich, which of course he wanted to be, you had to play in that very rough arena. He made the wrong enemies mm -hmm. and they, um, they bumped him upstairs. You know, it was a great demotion. He'd been a fancy trader, and they bumped him upstairs to deal with computers. And that was women's work. It was just like being the water boy at the, um, on the football team, you know? And so he, it, that was one of the best things that ever happened to him. He was fired. He was fired. And he very often talks about being fired. And it's a really important theme in a lot of how he deals with his employees. He hates firing people even though he does it, you know? I mean, I, there are, there's a long list there. But, um, but, but more important than that actually was that when they demoted him and made him this sort of computer nerd, they gave him the ticket to become the billionaire that he is sure. because he was one, he and his friends were some of the first people who realized that computers were taking over the paper culture of Wall Street. So after his first few billions, he got restless. And you say that's the word that's often used to describe him. That's right. And he decides to run for mayor of New York City, like most people, most billionaires <laughs> do nowadays, I guess. Um, what was the reaction to, in the business world, the political world, and among New Yorkers when he announced that he was running? People thought it was just goofy, you know? I mean, and uh, the political class, I have to say I was probably one of them. Uh, people just thought, you know, this guy's gonna spend a ton of money, all our friends are gonna get rich, and you know, then he'll disappear. Um, you know, there are a couple of reasons why he won that race. You know, 9-11 was so, imp I mean, you know. In fact, I remember the primary for that, for that election me too. was on September 11th, 2001. That's right. It was It had to be done over again, but that was the day. That's right. And it you know, I mean, every New Yorker knows where where you where you were at that moment. And um, it seemed to me that the city was kind of shaken uh, as much as that really can happen to this big city. And you know, Bloomberg looked like he could 
run the city and we'd be safe with yeah. him. Yeah. So listen, so he wins. What innovations did he bring to his new job? Well, you know, he, he walked in. The first thing he did was he said, I'm not going to hire people just because they're Democrats or Republicans. He happened to be a Republican at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, he sort of changed parties a lot. But uh, he was a Republican at that time. And he said, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't, I don't owe anybody anything. So I want to hire the best people who will work for me. Rudy Giuliani has not been shy about criticizing our current mayor, mm -hmm. uh, Bill de Blasio, mm -hmm. and his failures in policy. Um, but Mayor Bloomberg has not. And, that's, and I find that interesting because de Blasio had no problem criticizing Mayor Bloomberg, and clearly their work ethic is very different mm -hmm. from a 50 to 70 hour a week guy to a seven hour a month guy. <laughs> um, why? Why has, it, why has it been so silent? He vowed from, from the day he left office that he would not criticize his successor, even though his successor sort of campaigned as the anti-Bloomberg. And he told his staff, I don't want you leaking it to the press. I don't want you to talk to people about uh, de Blasio, even though de Blasio used, uh, you know, used him as the whipping boy all the time. Mm. Bloomberg considered, after he left office, he considered running for president, I think, four times you yeah. have in your book. while he was in office. Too. And while he was in office, too. But he ultimately never took the plunge. Why? He says that he didn't think he could make it through the primaries. That's this time. This is the 2020 race. He's, mm -hmm. he's now a, a Democrat, as Again. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, but in 2016, he came very close to running. And they, you know, did all the polls and all that sort of stuff. And, then he decided that if he ran as an independent, which is what he wanted to do, that he would probably pull votes away from Hillary Clinton and give the election to Donald Trump. And he did not want that to be in the first paragraph of his obituary. This is what he said. Yeah. So now he's 77 years old. <laughs> Are we done with the uh, many lives of Michael Bloomberg? Is, is he no longer reinventing himself? I think what he wants to do right now, he wants to make sure that either Donald Trump is not reelected or Trumpism has an alter, you have an alternative to it. And he is, he is on climate change, guns, yeah. a lot of other, uh, certainly the environment. He is really trying to be the <laughs> anti-Trump. And so he, he can do that. So we call him the Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> well, Eleanor, the book is The Many Lives of Michael Bloomberg. It's a great read. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs>